When writing Go code, you probably come across this underscore, also known as the blank identifier. Here are four different ways it's used. The last one is my favorite. Most Go developers don't know about it. Let's break down each one. Discarding unwanted values. You can imagine we have this inventory map that keeps track of the amount of fruits we have in stock. And when you read something from a map in Go, you supply the key value. And what you will get back is the value for apples, that will be 50. And the second value you get back is a boolean. And that tells if that key exists or not in the map. Then you can imagine you want to check if bananas exist in the inventory. But the problem is Go will not compile if you have unused variables. To solve this, you can use the underscore. And when using the underscore like this, it tells the Go compiler, we are not interested in this value. You can just ignore it. This pattern is also common when using methods. So for example, here, we are using the time.parse time.parse it will return a time and it will also return error in this case we are just interested to check if it's a valid format so we can ignore the value another situation when you want to discard values is for loops here we have a string slice and when you loop over the string slice the first value will be the index and the second one will be the value and in this case we're not interested in the index so we can just ignore it with the underscore and then print the value. Let's look at the next example and that is import for side effect. So sometimes in Go you need to import a package and not because you're calling a method from it but because importing it will trigger some kind of setup. A common example for this is when using a database driver and what's going to happen is this Postgres package it will have an init function that it will call. And this init function, it will register the database driver. Now, if we wouldn't have this underscore here, Go would complain that we have a package that we are not using. But again, we are using it. It's just that we are not calling the code. The package itself is calling the code that should be executed. Now, let's move on to the last example that most of the Go developers don't know about. And this is called interface compliance check. Imagine you're building a library and you're building a HTTP handler and the requirement is that your code must work with the standard library. When using HTTP listen and serve and you pass a handler, it's expected that this handler have a method called serve HTTP. So if we now would misspell this method or maybe we would change the arguments or we would just completely remove it then it will no longer be working with the standard library. So let's see here. If I delete a character here, we can then see that we get an error. And it says that it's missing the method serve HTTP. Then you might be asking, what is wrong with this? The problem is this would be a library and this main, it would be where someone else would use your library. And then they would see the error but we would not see the error. How do we fix it then? Here comes interface compliance check. So if I paste this line here, we can now see that we get the error here instead. And it says the same thing, missing method. But that is really good because now we can fix this error in our library instead. If I fix the misspelling, we can then see now that the errors are gone. By writing this, what we are saying is we need to be sure that it satisfied the handler interface from the standard library. Now we can keep developing our custom library. If we would break any functionality, we can catch that error before anyone else sees. In this video, we saw three use cases for the blank identifier, discarding values, side effects from imports, and the last one, interface checks.